Hello, my fellow hunters. This is Hiroja Shibe, your host of Satoshi's Hunters. You know, the plan is get clues, get keys, get money, buy island, retire. So, on this episode of Satoshi's Treasure Hunters, uh, we're going to talk about the rabbit key, the Lapon key, uh, the key that was released. Uh, it was just one clue this week for one key, and uh, we're just going to break it down a little bit. I'm going to first just kind of go through each stage, and then I'm going to read um, John Cantrell's uh, breakdown of how people were able to solve the key, give credit to the uh, group that found it, uh, talk about some, some bit of news within the space, uh, some tools that people are using, just a, a, a little things that have been going on within the community as well as some groups I've found that have um, advertised that they need members if you're interested in joining. And when we talk about the groups, we'll get, we'll get a little bit more in depth than that. So, fellow hunters, let's get started. <coughs> Saturday, well, I shouldn't say Saturday, but on Sunday, yeah, Sunday when I release um, clue day information, on Saturday we had this, will the palm key show up? So we knew that the name of the key, that it was coming, that on Sunday noon Pacific time, more information was going to drop. Well, that exactly was not the case. Uh, it was Easter Sunday. It dropped early. If you are a subscriber of the Satoshi Treasure newsletter, which is um, down on the bottom right here, uh, you can either do your phone or the email. Uh, you would have gotten a notification and it let you know that the key was here on the website. Uh, we'll talk about some tools that people have been using to kind of keep up with the updates of the, the, web, of the website uh, when, we, when we get into talking about tools for the hunt. So here we go. We're all getting excited. The clue has dropped and basically what it did was uh, dropped 421, 2019, Easter Sunday. You had to follow the crazy rabbit. So you had to click on this link right here. And it brought you to this page here. So follow the crazy rabbit. Now the crazy rabbit, when we get to the clue, is actually the name of the movie that the clue has come from. Uh, I was wondering if it was actually something made specifically for the hunt or if it was uh, something pulled from somewhere, and it actually was. It's, it's a movie, I'll have a link in the show notes, called The Crazy Rabbit. So, interesting. So, congratulations to the hunters who congregated the locations indicated in the first time of transmission and found the first keys of the hunt. A hearty congratulations as well to the few who realize that the travel and meet space will not entirely necessary to find these keys. While parts of the hunt are solitary endeavors, most of the time you'll need to work together as a clan to pull ahead. This is very key because when people are were making the solution or finding the solution for this particular hunt, you had to have some people for assistance. This next challenge is solvable for an individual only at a considerable expense, and we'll get into that. For a group, it is nothing but a simple test of cohesion and trust. In my hunt, as in life, remember that nothing is what it seems. So this in itself is highlighted is also a clue. So when you clicked on this, you got this GIF. And this GIF here, let me make it bigger, is from the movie Crazy Rabbit. It repeats, you see this rabbit doing all these things. And a man watching. Now. When we get into the breakdown of the clues, um, there's a couple things that people have noticed about this GIF. So people watched it, uh, they were looking at it, and went into it. So once they retrieved the clue, and we'll talk about that when we go through John Quintel's breakdown, it led them to this website where you had to insert a passphrase. Well, that passphrase was the J key. So, the first key was called the J key, and when you had that key, it allowed you to take you take the, the key itself, use it as, as a passphrase right here, and it decrypted the protected page. So you came here, you inserted the J key, and it gave you this message. 
The egg hunt is on. The J key slides into the lock with no play and turns out the slightest pressure. A soft click as it from far away comes from the lock mechanism. And it swings open to reveal an empty vault with a scrap of old paper on the floor. This is very like Dungeons and Dragons. This is very like the early text based games. I think it was like Zork or something where you had to type in open the door. Turn left. Pick up key. Use torch. Like very, like, this is very similar, very reminiscent of that particular style of game. Uh, you pick it up and you read the careful handwriting. It's time to go and stock up on the eggs for the rabbit. And then it gives you a um, URL for a website. And that website was for Happy Factory. It had a digital asset where you had to buy this egg here. Uh, you can buy with Bitcoin, uh, a credit card, debit card, uh, PayPal, and um, Amazon Pay. But the Amazon Pay was down, so you couldn't use that. And that was a problem for some people, particularly considering this is a global um, event, if you will, and not everyone, um, not all the payment platforms work for everyone's region. PayPal, for the most part, does, but Amazon definitely works very much globally. If you have an Amazon gift card, you can pretty much get every, everything and anything. Same thing with iTunes gift cards, but I have not, except for certain sectors of the internet, have not really seen them used as a payment platform. But you had to buy this particular egg, and then you get you get it in the email. There were some issues with that, and we'll talk about that when we get into the breakdown. But you bought this this digital egg. It gets into your email, and then from that egg, you're basically able to solve the problem. Um, it, it came into, I don't know why I don't have the picture, but it, it, it revealed itself to, once you manipulate it, to a QR code. And from that QR code, it provides you with a solution to the key. Uh, the first hunter group, if you will, that solved it was um, in Zero. Um, they announced it fairly early that day. Like, it's like I saw the email like around 10.16, 10.05. A.M. Pacific Standard Time is when people um, got the notification, if you will, and within like a couple hours, three hours, if you will, the key was solved. Uh, they were the first group, and they made the announcement. Of course, they blocked everything out. Um, the day they had uh, revealed themselves to have been able to find the key. Um, this, of course, is a key. Someone has revealed the key publicly to people. Uh, this is the key fragment. Um, somewhere else you'll find. Okay, so uh, there have, we'll talk about this in another episode about these little kind of poem phrases on the bottom here on these keys. Uh, but I'm going to read it to you. Um, I envy them, Maro, the humans on the cusp. The journeys require them to actually journey instead of just blinking through, in through the interstellar foam. That thing, you can still solve a puzzle on your own instead of just feeding it to the army form. Oh, perhaps I'm wrong, but I think they must have been happier. Intercepts from ST291 transmission. So the key was solved. It was solved really quickly. Uh, people had a lot of fun with this. And it was very interesting because was, you had people had a strong familiarity about oh, I know what to do with this, you, you know, how to download the, the information and to be able to retrieve the key. Um, I'm going to go through the John Cantrell breakdown and then I'll talk about a little bit of, I want to say too much controversy, but people have a bit of a pause uh, when it came to solving this particular key. So, again, John Cantrell, uh, he did the first write-up and he was pretty much the first person to solve the first three keys by using the dictionary brute force to get the past phrases to reveal the first three keys and he made it public. So, 
let us get into hello again uh, is that the I was not the first to find the key this time. Props to Enigma Zero for this one. After seeing that everyone enjoyed understanding how the first clues were solved, I thought I'd provide an explanation for the little pawn key. The second clue dropped early Easter Sunday. The clue can be viewed on the Satoshi's Treasure website. So he goes through here. We already know this information. The second clue contained a link to this gift, which is a choppy scene containing Bugs Bunny and a close-up of a human face. Uh, in the clue, the link is to this gif that said nothing is what it seems. This was the first time they were looking at the gif was probably more than just a gif. So what you had to do is you had to take this gif and then you had to download the gif and basically break it apart. Now, I personally didn't know how to do this. Uh, people were saying, oh, there's a zip file there, you had to download it into a zip so that way you can get, get the information. I was like, okay, so I thought if I download and change the gift and turn it to a zip, but that's not what it is. You had to actually get a particular program to, to download the gift to be able to access inform this information. So this is what he did. So the first thing I did was I downloaded this gift so I can analyze it. Um, he was using command lines here. This is a command line um, that you can use. Um, we get, I think it can be both for the Linux and um, Windows terminal. The next thing I like to do in the puzzle like this is to use a tool called BIMWALK to analyze the file hex to see what other files it may contain. So he used this particular program that he already had, and this was the output. So. Right here, I told you that there's a text file right in whoa uh, in the um, file itself. So right here, it has a text file, which means there's also information. And looking at this, he's using um, Apple. So you you download the GIF, you realize that there is a hidden text file. And then you can open or extract this text file to be able to obtain the clue from this clue in itself. So he breaks it down. He says he can clearly see that the GIF has a zip file. The next step was to extract the zip file from this file. Uh, he used his program uh, BIMWALK to be able to do this. These are the command line codes that he used to be able to do that. Uh, this tells the you know the BIMWALK to find the zip archive. He was able to extract it. This was the name of the file, and the file gave you uh, the web address, which again links back to the website. So a lot of these keys are going to link back to the website. And you had to use the J key to open the lock. Uh, we know from the previous puzzle of the J key, um, and this is the key. So you insert it here to the passphrase. Again, it, it led to another page, which is the egg hunt is on, and you had to go to this particular um, website. Uh, when you visit the project page for this, you'll see the next clue. This is a digital egg that will be delivered to your email box at a rapid speed by a fleet of delivery rabbits. There are eight limited edition versions of the egg, and a surprise awaits anyone who can put all of them together. All revenue from the egg sales will be converted to Bitcoin and sent to the hunt pot. Uh, this is the first clue where be, being a team appears to be very helpful. This suggests there are eight secrets that we need to collect from buying eggs. It's not clear if each egg you buy guarantees a unique secret. Unfortunately, this part of the puzzle cannot be played again as the eggs are sold out. If you have enough eggs or have teammates to help you out, you eventually start receiving your secrets delivered to the email address you use at, a, at checkout. And after gathering all eight pieces, you're able to fully reconstruct the egg image, which is uh, this QR code. Now, this is where a little bit of a canal flow, if you will, the controversy. People are like, why am I paying to receive this egg? Some people are a little, eh, especially considering it's like debit and credit card information. Who gets that information? Um, even if I were to use, you know, Bitcoin, do I want to spend my Bitcoin for this? Um, there was that. The other thing was it took a while for people to receive their eggs. 
Um, I see, think there was like a delay of an hour, if you will, from purchase to receiving the egg for some people. So if you were like really quick and were able to get there first, I guess you can say you were the first in line. There might have been some issues of, you know, maybe a bit of an overload, if you will, for everyone trying to purchase and buy these eggs. The other thing was like, some people say if you bought multiple eggs, there was a bit of a delay, but if you just bought one, it came a little bit quicker. So that was a, a weird thing. And plus, again, the Amazon Pay, you weren't able to use Amazon Pay to pay for this egg. Which, for some something that's supposed to be global, that's, you know, for that to be down, um, I can see that being a big, bit of an issue. Some people enjoy the fact that if they were the first ones to find this, that they would be able to receive, I guess, um, the pick coins from this. The people are like, well, why am I paying into this? Is it, this is, again, it comes to, you know, whole trust and verify. Uh, people are really insistent on wanting to know the uh, Bitcoin address to verify that there's actually a million dollar Bitcoin somewhere in an address that value, the USD value. Um, Eric Martel says that they, they are working to do that to because they did have the Bitcoin address as a clue and they still want it as a clue for a key. Um, but they want to do some signatures and making sure that uh, they validate that they actually do have the ownership of this particular Bitcoin and people can trust that this is something that um, they do possess and that there is a actual price. So some people were, like I said, there was a little bit of knuffle. I think it simmered down a little bit. It wasn't really too much money, 178, but it's, it still was like a hesitancy, if you will, for some people about purchasing something for this. And if you scan the QR, the QR code for the following message, it says, um, a dim light in the face of darkness on the walls and revealing a single key hanging from a thread in the middle of the vault. Again, very Dungeons and Dragons, if you will. Uh, and this is the congratulations page um, where I reveal the, um, the key fragment. Now, another thing I saw people do for this is um, they were able to break down the gift with different programs where they split the frames, uh, like this one, using this, uh, the East uh, GIF of COM. And somebody noticed that the frames were actually out of order and we ordered it to see if there was some, you know, anything to that, like everything, you know, kind of matters, if you will. And because everything matters, um, people are just hanging on any any little tidbit um, with this particular game. Uh, so the GIF generates 110 frames when you split it up. And you had to look for frame 32. And if you look real close, right here under the eye, it says unzip it. And it indicates that there's actually a file hidden in there. But you might have been, like, again, that was one tool that people utilize. The other one was, the, like, an unzipping program for files to where you can download it and can, it shows every little bit of information about that file. Um, it, so he says, you know, combined with our previous clues, nothing with the scenes, makes it clear that the GIF contains a zip file that we need to unzip. You can just run unzip, look on, GIF. The unzip tool is able to extract the file even with the GIF data at the beginning because zip extraction starts with the end of the file. You will be provided with the Lepon text file to unzip, finish, and continue the rest of the guide from there. So if you're looking to kind of like hone your skills, uh, figure out how everyone else is figuring out these um, clues to get the keys, uh, this is a, these are the little breakdowns for you to kind of walk through and do this yourself, figure out which programs you need on hand, so should, so should a similar clue pop up, you're able to retrieve, retrieve the keys with either with your group or by yourself, if you will, depending on how you play this game, and participate, you know, better with um, with this particular hunt. 
So even with the um, kind of knuffle with the uh, purchasing of the digital egg and it going to a pot, uh, the hunt pot, people, you know, are still excited about this game. Groups are forming. People are participating at um, all kinds of different levels. Uh, like I said, you know, this, we're only four keys in, and today the fifth key, the name of the fifth key, which I will talk about at the end of the episode, has been revealed today. People, you know, are getting excited. They're, they're, word is starting to trickle out. People, you know, very early, early on into this game. Mind you, there's a thousand keys. And out of those thousand, you know, you only need 400 to be able to uh, piece together and um, receive the prize. Uh, the game makers, you know, Eric, basically the biggest, um, the, the PR guy, if you will, has stated that, you know, they will adjust the game um, accordingly. Um, the first keys were like, they getting, you know, moving really fast. They're not taken so long as I guess you can say it, the game makers expected so there might be some adjustment for, for some of the keys to where they will take longer or maybe even take a while to solve maybe a day or two so far it seems to be ours with these initial keys so again shout out to England Zero for being the first um, group to um, solve this key so let's talk about groups. Uh, there have been a couple advertisements for groups um, that I've noticed that made themselves public that they're seeking members. One of them is um, the Dread Pirate Robert's Avengers, is Toshi's treasure team. So the Dread Pirate uh, Robert's Avengers is Toshi's treasure team. Uh, they have a Google Doc where you can um, sign up and they'll choose you if you have a skill set that they're seeking or a location that they're seeking to have a member from. So, fell this one be interested in joining the Dread Pirate Robbers of Interest. It's Toshi's Treasure Team organized by Marty Bent and Matt O'Dell of Marty Bent's Tales from the Crypt and Rabbit Hole Recap and Brady Swinson of Citizens Bitcoin. Uh, he was the one, Brady was the one who interviewed um, Eric Carcel, um the first week as the Hoshi's Treasure Hunt was launched. Um, the Dread Pirate Robbers Avengers will donate 10% of any prize our team wins while playing Satoshi's Treasure to free Ross Ulrich. Um, if you're unfamiliar with Ross Ulrich, uh, Ross Ulrich was, um, he went by the handle Dread Pirate Roberts. He was the one of the creators and founders of the Silk Road Marketplace, which was a darknet marketplace that um, allowed for the trade of drugs and illicit materials. Uh, I'm not going to go completely into it. He's serving a life sentence. Uh, the Silk Road Marketplace is one of the key factors of giving Bitcoin value as well as increasing awareness in the population more so than I would say donating to WikiLeaks or just existing in general of via word of mouth. mouth. Uh, Silk Road Marketplace really gave uh, Bitcoin its value. Um, but anyways, he's, he's serving a life sentence and people are, are making a, you know, a lot of effort to either get him a new trial or try to get him pardoned. Uh, he, his case has gone through a couple different appeals, even all the way to the Supreme Court on certain matters. Um, I'm not going to really rehash the whole thing about Ross Ulbricht, but I think it's um, fantastic that they're doing this. Um, I also think that there might be even more teams that might um, give a portion of their prize to different um, charitable and worthwhile things, which I think might actually be something that might gravitate people to their to their group saying you know oh we're going to give to you know open source um communities and, and list these different you know projects that they they think that it's, it's important for people to give to or you know clean water or something to that nature uh, and it's also kind of reminiscent of, of the pineapple fund which happened um last year in which um a fund was created to allow for different charitable organizations petition and receive um, Bitcoin. We are looking to build a geogra 
The geographical diversity of people with varied knowledge and skills, including puzzles, alternative reality games, crypto, uh, cryptography, coding, research, the internet, Bitcoin history, science, and humanities. There will be a limited number of team members to keep things manageable. Please don't take it personally if you don't get invited. A lot of teams will form and people merge over the course of the game in the quest to achieve the born at unique keys. Um, I have a link in the show notes to this as well as to um, the other group, which is Satoshi's Treasure Satoshi's Treasure Magellan Clan. Welcome, Hunter. We're going on an exciting expedition about the, around the world in search of Satoshi's treasure. We will explore the world like Magellan in the end. We will be back more knowledgeable and, if you're lucky, much richer. Um, I don't know so much about this group. I know they've been pretty vocal. Um, with them, you know, on Telegram and Twitter. Um, they have a token which is an Ethereum token, based token, I believe. You know, I, I'm putting it up here, you know, there might be something for somebody. They do have rules. I'm not going to go through all their rules. Um, but the, again, this is a, you know, it's a group that's advertising. And people are going to go, th- go by their values or what they're seeking and skill sets. And there'll be different types of dynamics and the reason why different groups form. So let's talk about some tools. Um, there is a Discord, Discord app called Ordo, will allow people to manage teams and solve puzzles quickly. So John uh, Cantrell, the guy that's been breaking down all the different um, means of uh, obtaining the different keys, uh, he's the one responsible for creating this particular uh, Discord uh, managing service, if you will. So I, I recommend um, checking it out and seeing if this is something for your Discord channel, if this is something that you would like to utilize. So There's also um, an actual official Satoshi Treasures tool, um, but the site was taken down. As you can see here, it's not found. This particular tool that was on the Satoshi Treasures uh, got XYZ, and it was like a slash SSSS, was intended to um, allow for the groups to verify the keys, but also as a tool to assemble them together once they've uh, found 400, if you will, uh, an official tool from, from the game makers. Now, another particular uh, tool, uh, this is not an official tool, but this tool is uh, the hunt is on. It keeps track of satellite transmissions through the block stream. And so it allows people to be able to determine whether or not um, a particular transmission is coming from Satoshi's treasure. Uh, you know, this information could be helpful for people if they want to go back through the archives or determine, you know, what a message is. Because, you know, hey, not everyone's, you know, having a, hooking up a Raspberry Pi or has the means or the skill set to. Uh, receive the satellite transmission so they're relying on other people this is another type of service for that if you will um, we'll see as time progress um, how worthwhile this particular tool is now this last tool um, it's more of a fun one it just kind of keeps track of all the things that are happening within the Satoshi treasure uh, hunt community all the different announcements the keys uh, dates and times uh, it's just a nice little you know, timeline to, to keep track of things. Uh, it could be some something very important. You know, we don't know maybe the particular dates the keys being released. That could have a factor into a particular clue. We just learned from the fourth key that the first key, uh, having that key information, was able to unlock a passphrase that gathered more information for you to be able to solve the fourth key. So there's going to be a lot of interlocking when it comes to the different clues and the different keys that um, have been disclosed or have been found by people. So this is not necessarily a tool, um, but it's a website. And I also have a link to a different website that I'm not sure how reliable it is. Uh, But this first website is called Satoshi's Treasure Club. It has uh, the different keys that are available at this time. Uh, it has the treasure map, 
uh, basically the GPS coordinates of the real world uh, clues for the different keys that are out there uh, is an effort to try to kind of gather all the different information out there on kind of like a fan site if you will um, so that's a, a nice effective tool for people either individuals or groups to be able to track all the different information going on um, I, I imagine as more keys get released these type of sites would be helpful and useful to keep track of um, all the information that is out there. Uh, the other one is Toshi's Keys. It is it didn't update really. Uh, this one is also not quite updated, but I'm sure it's, it's something that's going to happen. Um, it's interesting to note that they do have like in the corner here for Toshi's Treasure Club. You know, one million USD is the value of the prize. That's approximately like one hundred and ninety point four eight bitcoins. Um, as the, I guess you could say the time of the launch of the hunt. As time progresses, those keys, I mean, not so those keys, but those bitcoins could easily increase in value or decrease in value. It's not going to go to zero, but it could easily increase or, or go down. And that'd be interesting to see how the dynamic shifts um, within the different groups as, say, for example, maybe it goes to 1.5 million or doubles, $2 million, what that will do for the game. So this last bit here... Um, has to do with the fact that uh, there's these business cards that Eric has disclosed them potentially up to 18 people um, Eric and Dobi Wan are really firmly two people that are particip participants in the game there's also um, Ian uh, but he hasn't really been very vocal so while Eric has mentioned him, I'm very hesitant, even though I have this information in the show notes, as well as another gentleman named Tony, um, I can't pronounce his last name, um, as being participants into this particular uh, project. Uh, they have these business cards. Um, they're, they're being pretty public of, you know, where conferences are going to be and if they're going to have those business cards available. If you gather these business cards up, you should be able to piece together a key, um, another potential key that of the 400 you need to, or, to order to unlock the grand prize. So Eric tweeted this out. Um, he said, I'll send a business card containing a part of the key to anyone who can identify what the gift from last night glue is from. Someone tweeted that, um, potentially could have, you know, earned that business card. Uh, Dovi Wan, um, if you go on Twitter, has stated like what conference she's going to. She says she, she will have some of those business cards if people want to greet her and meet her. Uh, I believe Tony has said the same thing. Um, so I just caution people when they're going through LinkedIn and Twitter accounts to try to figure out who potentially could be part of the group that has have these business cards that like not to harass people um, to be polite as possible they, either they have the cards or they don't and, and you're gonna have to take their word for it uh, I would just focus on the people that publicly stated or have affirmed in some manner that they are part of this group before really going after people and stuff like that and, and trying to get business cards from them uh, so I have some <coughs> So I have links in the show notes to some recent media. This is a past thing, but it kind of got retweeted about um, Eric Melser. He was um, interviewed for a podcast. Um, it'd be interesting to just kind of hear, called the, the podcast is called The Flippening. Just kind of hear what he thinks about um, cryptocurrencies, Bitcoin, and being in the space. Um, the other, the, there's a news article, it's much more recent. Um, and kind of breaking down, you know, his thoughts about the game, what to expect from the game, and clues and keys and things of that nature. Uh, I wouldn't say you have to read between the lines, but I would, you know, try to keep track of the media. He is the PR guy, so you have to kind of keep track of him on both Telegram, Twitter, and any kind of media outlets to potentially get kind of gar garner or gain some insight about potentially any type of clues and keys that might be disclosed. And here we have um, what I like to call like kind of a debunking or disinformation segment. So I'm going to read this message. It kind of self-explanatory what happened, but there was a bit of a knuffle earlier, and um, 
out of this knuffle, if you will, we, you know, this misstep by this person, it wasn't intentional. Um, we got something positive happening for the community. So here we go. Uh, this came from the um, Blockstream satellite service that, that initially, you know, broadcast the, that the hunt was happening. So using that same service, this individual did, um, did this and it's very easy to use the Blockstream service. You don't actually have to have a satellite or a satellite receiver. You can just go to their site, uh, type in your message, whatever you want to type or uh, send out there into the world and just pay the 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 the, the invoice in, in using the Lightning Network. So I'm sending you this transmission to thank you. A huge thank you to all the people who took the time to read my previous transmission to receive it and to relay it on Twitter. <laughs> Um, I'm a, I am a hunter, but I'm also an Earthman, and for the first time in history of mankind, we can send a message to the whole world and the surrounding area by satellite. We can free ourselves from censorship and borders to deliver a message. It is a message that counts, not just the sender. This is why I send it under a pseudonym, and I'm not here to feed an ego trip. People of the world, appropriate this technology for you. Let's go back to hunting. First of all, the message um, N291 was sent by me. I thought maybe sending it would activate a smart contract or something. Um, my intention was not to send a hoax. So we'll talk about smart contracts and some other kind of like cryptographic um, terms that people utilize um, when discussing this game. Just kind of have a you know understanding of the vernacular. Um, My intention was not to send a hoax. That's why I personally apologized to Eric. I saw afterwards that some people thought it was an official Satoshi's treasure transmission. Sorry if you wasted your time because of me and I apologize. Uh, secondly, I'd like to relay to the people who received and relayed my transmission in 294 on Twitter. And then he listed the Twitter users. Uh, massive big up to Blockstream for the technology implemented and for the retweet. So, you know, this is Blockstream's technology. Anyone can use this satellite. Um, transmission service if you will is not just for Satoshi's treasure hunters so <laughs> people need to understand that um, if you're an ice okay so of course big up to Satoshi's treasure staff and all the hunters of the world if you're an isolated hunter I offer you to join the EV Satoshi treasure clan which is on discord I'm actually a participant in this um, clan as well only you have a little chance of success, but above all, you can deprive yourself of enormous sharing of knowledge and beautiful encounters. Let's discover cryptographic keys together. You're Satoshi Treasure. We are Satoshi Treasure. I'm Satoshi Treasure. Ian and Jones is Satoshi Treasure. Sasha is Satoshi Treasure. Sherlock is Satoshi Treasure. Neo is Satoshi Treasure. And Satoshi Nakamoto is Satoshi Treasure. And I hope he fucking has it. Share this message on Twitter as our staff friends see our dedication as Hunter. And then he gives his username and it was transmitted April the 23rd. So because of this and a couple other things, um, and assistance, pretty much like a vocal insistence by the community, um, Eric has stated that he's going to, the Satoshi Treasure um, game makers, if you will, are going to start signing um, any messages and transmissions they send with the PGG key that when they do disclose the Bitcoin address that they're going to verify it and sign it so people know that any information coming from them um, is from them and not a hoax, not a scam, not disinformation or anything like that. And so again, we're just four keys in with the fifth key name um, disclosed today. Uh, still very early on, but because of these small missteps, you know, we're having some changes into how the game is being um, done um, for, for a positive thing. It's not a very negative thing or anything like that. It's just sign, verify, and making sure that people know what is legit, what is a real transmission, what is a real message, um, what is a real clue for a key. And here is a bit of uh, fan art that Eric tweeted out. Someone had taken the um, the pong key egg and made this really cool looking puzzle painting. It's, it's actually kind of very pretty. And here is the name of the fifth key that's been disclosed. It's called the hunted key and it's going to be soon and hasn't been found yet. 
uh, the hunt is on clues here frequently sign up to be notified so they changed it. It's not going to be Sundays uh, at 12 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. You're just going to have to be an active watcher of the site, if you will. Um, get your alerts going, your notifications. Um, if you're in a clan, maybe there might be a few people that are responsible to broadcast, hey, there's been a change to the website, or the, the key clue has been released, and for people to be made aware of it so they can get on it. Um, there is a space here below, so I'm assuming that there is going to be another key release either over the weekend or fairly soon afterwards. Um, we're not sure how frequent these, like I said, frequently these keys are, um, but this this um, this game is supposed to take a year to complete, and they're going at a pretty good clip pace. But I'll be be curious to see how. Uh, frequent these keys are released. Um, if they're going to space it out a bit to either allow for certain solutions to happen or um, I don't know, to change the, um, the difficulty level of playing the game if you will. So that's it hunters. Um, that's all the information I have that has happened this week. Um, if I miss anything please comment below. If you are part of a group, or if you're looking for a group, or if you're international, um, I mostly found, you know, because I'm in, in the States, um, American-centric based groups, if you will, but I'm very interested and fascinated to know who's forming in China, Russia, India, uh, anywhere out there. If you're looking for a specific type of uh, person with a skill set or a location, um, my email is um, right down below in the, in the show notes. It's Satoshi Treasure Hunters at protonmail.com. Uh, you can email me and I can uh, put it in the next video um, as soon as, you know, um, I'll be making the, the hunted key video. As soon as the, the key has been disclosed, um, I can put it up for you or the next time, the, ne the following week, when I do a weekend review, I can have that. Um, that information out so that people are aware that you're looking for somebody for your group. So until next time, hunters, um, I'm Hiroja Shive. This is Hiroja's Treasure Hunters. You can find me at Twitter at Hiroja Shive. Uh, please like, subscribe, and share, and just give your thoughts um, down below in the comments. To the hunt.